This is a story about cancer, companion animals, and people like Emily Brown. I received a terminal diagnosis, and that was actually in October 22nd of 1997. 19 years ago, when she was just 11 years old, Emily was given three months to live. Emily and I were in the hospital um, 21 days a month for 10 months. 10 months. And then just some photos of my dad and I was in the hospital. My parents and I had decided with the help of my oncologist to enroll in a clinical trial. And that clinical trial was MTPPE. Okay, let's go. It's a drug that had showed promise in treating osteosarcoma in dogs. In Emily's case, the fact that she had osteosarcoma, we were actually able to translate knowledge from the canine, from the dog model, into treating children with osteosarcoma specifically. For Emily, that was her life-saving gift. At this point, the story takes a unique twist. Later, that's when we learned of it, is because we were able to look back and remember those stories and go, yeah, I can see it now, I get it. I really, truly get it. Can I change this for toothpaste? <laughs> At a camp for kids with cancer, she got a fascinating surprise from a veterinary oncologist. A lot of the volunteers that are camp counselors and help run the camp are from the CSU Animal Cancer Center. And there was this guy, and he came up to me and said, Hey, Emily Brown. I'm like, yeah. And he's like, I know all about you. I'm like, I have never seen you in my life. He's like, no, no. I was involved with your care. And I'm like, dealing, you're a vet. You, there's no way you could could have been involved in my treatment. He goes, yeah, I was. My name's Dr. Steve Whitlow. We're going to have a field day, and then we get ice cream. So Many share in Emily's surprise, but the close collaborations between human and animal cancer researchers are real meaningful and significant. The nature of the way that CSU and CU work together, it, it kind of transcends the institutions and it becomes Colorado's cancer center. This has been a long-standing relationship that's really come to fruition now with the kids, Dan Theodorescu and Rod Page, uh, taking ownership and bringing it to a whole new level. I have a card on my desk from a woman whose dog was treated up at CSU and this dog had osteosarcoma. And she said, please keep doing what you're doing because I know it matters. I think a lot of everyday miracles anymore are just having the right people at the right time. And in my case, it was having Leah and Dr. Withrow and them communicating and collaborating and having that great team. Absolutely. The path to a cure in both species may be closer than imagined. As a matter of fact, the answer to cancer may be walking right beside us. The story of one cure and translational oncology took a dramatic turn in the summer of 2015. I wanted to give a brief background to get us all on the same page about some of the challenges of cancer and how the interface between human oncology and canine oncology uh, can benefit each other. Uh, Michael Kasten, the director of the Duke Cancer Institute, opened a unique workshop at the Institute of Medicine in Washington, D.C. And the main goals of this day and a half workshop is to think about how we can learn from each other. The veterinary community has been acutely aware of this for a long time. And they've tried to make people understand the opportunities there are by these kinds of partnerships. And uh, Dr. Page at, at Colorado State has been a national leader in this. In a sense, that's what this whole moonshot announcement is about from uh, the Obama administration is a focus on cancer that it's all about breaking down barriers. Um, I'll tell you a story. Len Lichtenfeld closed the event zone. with a personal message. Um, for me, my comfort zone is reflecting on over a 40-year career in clinical oncology. And so when I received the invitation to appear before you today, I had to ask myself, really? And talk to a number of my colleagues and say, what do you know about this topic? And everybody gave me a blank stare. The week before the Institute, 
he had lost his cherished golden retriever, Lily, to cancer. This is dog. Dog's name is Lily. It's our pet. She was with us for 11 years. Um, I didn't think this would happen, but it has happened. I started to cry. Uh, I had not cried to that point. So maybe that says it all, what it all meant to me. That's when it really struck me. The personal loss, the science and what could be done, the opportunities, and the commitment to the people who were in the room to talk and study and learn and listen. Loss is just one of the many things we share with our animals, but it could be the most motivating. It's what fuels people's passion. The hope offered by Colorado State inspired Meg Cowan O'Neill to start One Cure. Yeah, I, you know, it's, it's interesting. I knew that dogs got cancer, um, and I knew that people got it, obviously, but I had never made the connection, and I don't think I'd thought a whole lot about canine cancer until, until it hit me and affected me. The Flint Animal Cancer Center extended the life of her two dogs, both of whom had cancer. During that same period, Meg's father lost his battle with lung cancer. Overwhelming as it was, she wants to stay in those moments of anger and grief to continue the fight. I want to remember what that felt like when I, when I felt like there wasn't any hope. And that's what will continue to push me to help tell this One Cure story so that hopefully other people don't have to go through that. You know, when I first came up here, I was blown away. I had no idea this was happening. I said, why don't people know about this? Why aren't we raising money? Why aren't we fueling this? this wonderful fire they're building, you know, and all the knowledge that they're doing and all the breakthroughs and, you know, both being such an incredible, passionate animal lovers and being touched in all of our areas of our lives by cancer, how could you not do something? You know, dedicated owners who have been served in the clinic, whether their animal was cured or not, they, at the end of the day, they know we cared and that they know there's an unmet mission to continue to now utilize dog and cat cancer for the benefit of humans and for the benefit of the dogs and the cats. This mission drives owners involved in current clinical trials. Options for treating As a veterinarian in Pagosa Springs, Colorado, Joe Schmidt sees too much cancer. We see more cancers overall, it seems like, than uh, than we used to in the past. You, you just heart sinks and when you pull up an x-ray and you, you look at it and go, oh no, this isn't good. It became personal when the Schmidt family dog, Riley, got cancer. I think we decided right away that we were going to do uh, everything we could and look at the options. So they jumped at the chance to enter a clinical trial at Ready? Colorado Come State. On, let's go, let's go for a ride. Go on. Motivated? Every three weeks, they make the 12 hour round trip track from Pagosa Springs to CSU for treatment. We really didn't have to think twice. The, the only thing that, made us pause just a little bit was we were going into this. He was diagnosed uh, at the very beginning of January. We were a little concerned about having to get up to CSU from here and what the weather might be like. The fact that it's being translated into the human side is just another big plus for yeah, us. Not the, way this the desire to feed a larger body of knowledge with more information has always been a hallmark of One Cure owners. When Bo, a loyal and beloved companion of Bill Luke's, developed cancer, he was the first to receive an experimental radiation treatment at CSU. We had a year and a half of fantastic adventures together um, before his time was up. The cutting edge therapy received by Bo improved the treatment for the next recipient, Keister. We went with that therapy because of Bo. Keister benefited from Bo, and the next dog will benefit more from Keister. The puzzle continues to grow into a complex web. These days, with Bo forever in his heart, Bill competes in agility trials with his dogs Jackson and Kate. This activity has helped him plot a new course for himself and provides distraction from his own cancer journey. My only hope is to find a suitable clinical trial. We're going to do everything we can to make the best of whatever the possibilities are. But if those possibilities can be changed even 
a little bit with one cure. I'd, I'd be really grateful. One Cure is about sharing knowledge and adding ideas to a puzzle in desperate need of new information. But as Bill, Emily, and everyone touched by cancer helps us see, what it's really about is hope. Hope for a day, hope for a lifetime, hope for One Cure. There are potentials, the opportunity to unlock those potentials is very real. As we leave this room, let's commit to taking a look at those potentials, determining what they are, and making that happen. Thank you very much.